Hey there guys and gals, this is AutoTech and today we are going to be removing a Dyna fuel tank. So one tip I can give you to make this process a lot easier is to make sure your fuel level is a little bit lower. Um, I know it's a little bit less than that right now. I was just moving it around, so it's probably getting a false reading right now. But this will prevent you from having a bunch of fuel get all over the ground when you unhook that front um, crossover tube. The first step is going to be to remove your seat. On mine, it's just a 532nds Allen key at the back here, and then my seat pops right off. Once I have this bolt removed, I thread it back in a little bit just so that I don't lose it because something small like this can easily get kicked. Now that you got your seat out of the way, go ahead and remove this screw and these two screws. On mine, they are both 3 16 Allen sockets. The two long ones with small washers are what secure the instrument cluster. The shorter one with the big washer is what secures the trim plate. I'm going to toss them in a Ziploc baggie and just set them in a drawer in the toolbox because I won't be needing these for a little bit now. Take a clean rag and lay it down like that so that you don't scratch anything and then turn this over to expose the connectors. Okay, I found a much easier way. Come over to this side of your neck, pop out that grommet that's in there, and then if you pull on this a little bit, this uh, connector is actually just tucked up in there like that. If you unplug this connector, and then you unplug the fuel line at the module, you'll be able to remove this whole thing. Just remember that the wire goes underneath that fuel line. Not sure if it'll make a huge difference, but just remember that so that if you go to put it back, you put it in the same way it came off. Unclip this connector from the fuel module, and now your entire cluster can come off and you can set it somewhere safe. This line right here just slides off, doesn't take too much, there we go. And uh, there's no fuel in that one, that one's just a breather line. Now just keep this out of my way while I'm working. I took this fuel line and I'm just gonna tuck it up by the headlight there, kinda whatever, you know, just, oop, there we go, see? <laughs> just something like that so that I can still get access at the bolts and then I don't have to worry about this getting in my way when I'm pissing around with the tank. Okay, the next step is to disconnect the main supply hose or tube, whatever you want to call it. This is a quick connect fitting. This silver part slides up while this slides down. Now, if you're not experienced with how these work, you usually want to push up on the hose and then work it a little bit. There it goes, see? And then now you'll pop that line down. I'm gonna use two hands for that just so that I don't break a nipple off or something like that. Um, there will be fuel in the line, but that quick connect fitting, there won't be any fuel in that. So a little bit will drip out. There you have it, one disconnected fuel line. I actually barely even got a drop. I'm hoping that angle that I tried right there showed up really good. Just so you can see, you gotta work it a little bit, but it's not too bad. All right, so now they want you to cut this hose clamp. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. No, I can't do it one-handed. Almost. <laughs> okay, once you get that hose clamp off, just kind of work this hose a little bit, but don't get too excited and unhook it just yet because we're gonna do something else first. We're gonna remove the rear um, nut or bolt and acorn nut and washers, and then we'll remove the front ones. Uh, not a huge deal, but just remember that the acorn nut goes on the right side. Mine is a 13 mil on both sides for both of those nuts and bolts. And again, that's a 13 mil for the front one. Okay, so mine ended up being the exact same length and exact same thickness for the top and bottom. So don't worry too much about screwing them up. I'm still gonna thread them together like that and toss them in the bag with those um, gauge bolts. Okay, so the reason I left that front line hooked up for right now is because um, this is kind of tough holding the tank up like this and uh, filming it. My fuel gauge light, the wire comes here and then you can see the connectors right there. At least I hope it shows up. Now that was a hell of a process to unhook that and put it in like when I had the tank on the bike. So 
I'm gonna just lift the tank and tweak it like this, and then I'll be able to undo that connector and get the wire out of the clip before I unhook that fuel line and have fuel spraying everywhere. Okay, there you have it. That line is out of the way. Now, an assistant would be amazing for this process right here. I don't have one, so I'm gonna have to put down the camera for this. Quickly unhook this line, lift the tank up above the frame, and quickly pop this line back on. This is why you want your tank really low, because you're gonna lose fuel. Okay, so there you have it. The tank is off. I'll show you what I kinda did. I kinda, like I reached over the bike, and then I was able to get my hand on this fuel line, and then uh, with my other hand, I reached under, and then as I unhooked the fuel line, I put my finger over the nipple, and then I quickly pulled the tank up, and then used my other hand to pop that hose back on. So, let's take a look here. As you can see, I lost like a couple tablespoons of fuel. Not bad. Well, I got you here. This is that clip for, um, that uh, fuel sender so that'll plug in there and then that hooks in there and it's just a royal pain to get it with the tank on the bike okay there you have it one removed fuel tank so now you got access to whatever you got to do if you got to take your rocker covers off if you got to do your throttle body stuff if you got to do your idle cables it's all easy access and as you can see it took I don't know maybe a half hour with a smoke to pop that off so it's not bad at all so to install this tank it's gonna be pretty well the exact opposite of what we just did and uh, if you remember me telling you but not able to show you kind of straddle the tank reach around hold on to the one fuel line quickly unhook it set it on the frame and hook it back up all right so that did not go on as smooth as it came off and I lost um, a little bit of fuel, but that'll clean the concrete, so don't worry about that. Just don't smoke in here for a bit while longer. Um, don't forget to hook up your fuel gauge if your bike is equipped with one. All right, so slide your uh, two bolts through. Get a little bit of blue on them. Don't forget about the front one as well. And then we're going to put those acorn nuts on with the washers. The torque spec for this is 15 to 20 foot pounds, so I'm going to torque it at 18 foot pounds, and that goes for this one as well. To pop this back in, it's a two handed job. You got to slide the collar up, push the pipe or hose back in, and then pop this back down. Give it a little bit of a tug to make sure it's in there. Having your fuel line come off while you're riding would probably be a really bad time. So don't forget about this line. Now, unfortunately, this is a very ugly repair. I'm not happy about this. I had to use a worm gear style hose clamp because I don't have those pliers that uh, squish those original hose clamps. So at some point I may replace this just because this doesn't look very good. <laughs> So I took the opportunity before I put the console on just to kind of clean all that stuff that was in behind there. And then don't forget to re-plug in your vent line. Remember to put a rag on your tank, lay your console on a side like that, and then you can plug in your fuel pump module. And now you'll be able to lay this over on top and then plug in that other connector. So before I even bolted this down, I decided to uh, run the wires up in there, you know, and just push them in there. This little uh, bushing or, you know, wire holder, whatever you want to call it, kind of sucked to put in there, but, uh, you know, whatever. You kind of just work it in, get it in there, and then uh, you'll be all right. And before I uh, go ahead and bolt this down, I'm actually going to cycle that fuel pump a couple of times, make sure there's no leaks from anywhere. Maybe I'll even... Uh, Kind of pull on that a little bit while it's priming. Sounds like it's good, looks like it's good. Little dab of blue, and remember the longer ones go up to the instrument cluster. You wow. guessed it, little dab of blue, and then we're gonna start this back bolt. The torque on these ones is not much at all. Like it's 49 inch pounds, so yeah, definitely take her easy when you're just ramming it in there. This one here is 24 inch pounds. Um, I don't have a torque wrench here that's going to go that low, so I'm just going to do that one by feel. Toss your seat back on, a little dab of blue on that bolt, and torque it to 50 inch pounds. Alright, so there you have it. Um, 
one removed and installed Harley-Davidson fuel tank. I think for the next couple of fill-ups, I'm probably not going to trust this thing very much, so I'm going to constantly be checking this for a leak, uh, just because I'm always paranoid like that. So guys, I hope this one's uh, going to help you out. If you have any more questions or anything like that, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. If you're new to this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and thanks for taking the time and watching.